This is part 3 of my lecture on correlation and regression in which I shall perform an example of a calculation of correlation. Let's take as an example some data on height and weight and we ask the question are tall patients heavier than short ones? The experimental hypothesis H1 could be that patients height and weight are correlated so the null hypothesis is the opposite that there is no correlation between height and weight. Notice this is a two-tailed hypothesis because we don't care whether any correlation is positive or negative we're just looking for a correlation in any direction. The data that we have are the measured height and weight of 20 patients selected at random from those attending our department. It's very easy to measure the height and weight of our patients. Here we've got a very convenient set of scales with a built-in height measure. And it gives a digital readout of the height and weight. In this case, 170 centimeters and 73 kilograms. The data are clearly quantitative. Uh, we haven't restricted either variable. We have a full range of height and weight, so we can use Pearson's correlation coefficient. Here's our plot of the weight against the height for our 20 patients. This is a scatter plot that I've already showed you, and it does seem to indicate that there is a tendency for weight to increase with height, at least for those who are over 170 centimeters but we want to prove whether this is a statistically significant correlation. So to do the calculation we tabulate the height and weight of all the patients. Here clearly the values are paired so the patient with a height of 180 centimeters had a weight of 82 kilograms, the patient with a height of 155 centimeters had a weight of 56 kilograms and so on. We want to calculate the average or mean height and weight so we add up all the heights and that gives us 3480 centimeters we add up all the weights that gives a total of 1460 kilograms so we know that n is 20 there are 20 patients so the mean height is the total 3480 divided by 20 which is 174 centimeters and the mean weight is the total of 1460 divided by 20 which is 73 kilograms. Having calculated the mean height and weight we're now in a position to calculate the standard deviation or the variance of height and weight. To do that we take the means away from all the measurements. So here I've shown the height deviation that is the height minus the mean height so it's 180 centimeters minus a mean of 174 which is 6 for the first patient and for their weight it's 82 kilograms minus a mean of 73 kilograms which is a deviation of 9 kilograms and so on for all the other patients. The next step in calculating the variance is to square these deviations so the height deviation of 6 squared gives 36 and the weight deviation of 9 squared gives 81 and so on. The total squared deviation for heights comes to a total of 2130 and for weights comes to a total of 8446. If you remember to calculate the variance we take the mean of the uh, squared deviations so it's 2130 for height divided by 20 which is 106 that's in units of centimeters squared and for weight it's the total of 8446 divided by 20 which is 422 and that's in units of kilograms squared so far that's what we've been used to doing for calculating variances now the difference here is that we want to calculate the covariance remember the covariance was calculated not by squaring the height or weight deviation but by multiplying the height deviation multiplied by the weight deviation so for the first patients it's a height deviation of 6 multiplied by a weight deviation of 9 which is 54 
for the second patient it's a height deviation of minus 19 multiplied by a weight deviation of minus 17 which is 323 because a minus times a minus gives a positive. Notice that although height deviations and weight deviations squared always have to be positive, here where we've got height deviation times weight deviation, we can have negative values as well. So for example, this patient with a height of 177 and a weight of 72 has a height deviation of 3 and a weight deviation of minus 1. So 3 times minus 1 is minus 3 for the height times the weight deviation. So we can get negative values in this column. So when we add up the total height deviation times weight deviation, taking due account of any negative signs, we end up with a total of 3, 4, 6, 6. So the covariance is defined as the mean from that column, 3, 4, 6, 6 divided by 20, is 173 and that's in units of centimeters times kilograms. So summarizing those numbers we've got a height variance of 106 centimeters squared, a weight variance of 422 kilograms squared and a covariance of 173 centimeter kilogram. If you remember the definition of R is it's the covariance divided by the geometric mean of the X and Y variances so it's 173, the covariance, divided by the square root of 422, which is the weight variance, multiplied by 106, which is the height variance. That's equal to 173 divided by 211, which comes to 0.82. So that's the correlation coefficient. We need to decide whether that's significant. And to do that, we calculate T, which was defined as R, multiplied by the square root of n minus 2 over 1 minus r squared. Well, r is 0.82, n was 20, so n minus 2 is 18, and 1 minus r squared is 1 minus 0.82 squared. That's equal to 0.82 times the square root of 18 over 1 minus 0.67, which is 0.82 times the square root of 54.5, which comes to 6.0. So T is 6.0, and the number of degrees of freedom, n minus 2, is just 18. So we need to see whether this is significant from tables of the T distribution. Here's a table of the T distribution, and we want the row corresponding to 18 degrees of freedom. Now remembering that we're doing a two-tailed test, we look here for significance level of 0.05. We see that the critical T is 2.1. And the significance of 0 0.01, the critical value is 2.878. And for a significance of 0 0.001, the critical value is 3.922. So what we said is that from the T distribution with 18 degrees of freedom and for a two-tailed test, for 5% significance, we have a critical value of 2.1. For 1% significance, we have a critical value of 2.88. And for 0.1% significance, a critical value of 3.92. Now, if you remember, our T value was 6.0, which is greater than all of those critical values. So we have a highly significant result with a p-value of less than 0.001. So we can definitely reject the null hypothesis and s say that therefore there must be a significant correlation between height and weight. Because after we've rejected the null hypothesis, which was that there was no correlation, that's the only alternative left. There must be a correlation. So what we saw in the scatter plot is proved statistically. So in conclusion, we can say that the patient's height and weight are indeed correlated with a correlation coefficient of 0.82. Moreover, that correlation is highly significant with a p-value of less than 0 0.001. And the correlation is positive. That is, weight increases as height increases. Uh, we have a positive value of R, and we saw from the graph that the trend was in the upwards direction. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is a linear relationship between height and weight. In fact, if we look at the best line drawn through our 
scattergraph, we see that although it tends to be linear at heights above about 170, it's actually much flatter below that. So although there is an overall correlation, and a s highly significant one, that doesn't necessarily mean that, that we've got a straight line. In this case, the data is definitely quite curved. So that's the end of part three of this lecture.